Alex here with another install video, this time a mirror dash cam into a Honda Civic, which is one of the most popular cars out there. But the steps that you'll see are general steps that can be applied to other vehicles as well. And as always, I place links in the description down below to the mirror dash cam that you see me installing, as well as to other mirror dash cams that I have previously reviewed in case you want to get one for yourself. And I'll start by placing the new mirror dash cam on top of the old mirror and then securing it on each end with the included straps. Also notice that when the LCD panel is off, the mirror dash cam works similar to a normal mirror. Next, I'm going to run the cable for the rear camera. Now I'm going to take that cable and insert it into the trim, basically the headliner of the vehicle. Normally I use my fingers or sometimes the installation tool can be used to help insert the cable underneath that headliner. And once I get to this area, which we call the A-pillar, I'm going to slow down right here because there is an airbag. And at this point, I have reached the A-pillar of the vehicle and most newer vehicles have an airbag locating into this area. Now, there are some dangers whenever you are working around a live airbag, and this is something that most dashcam installers have learned to deal with and work around, but it is a dangerous thing because it's a live airbag. Imagine that thing deploying when your face is this close to it or whether you're holding tools right next to your face, and this thing deploying with high force. And it's also important to point out that even after disconnecting the car's battery, some airbag systems retain power for a certain period of time. So it is very possible that even with the power completely disconnected to the car, the airbag could still potentially be alive and ready to go. And because of that, most installers will avoid airbags or will avoid placing things over the airbag. Let me show you how I run my cable underneath the airbag area. And while not strictly necessary, I like to pull the weather stripping so I can get the most access possible to this area. Notice the airbag is hiding right here. So I'm gonna take the cable and I'm gonna lift the panel just enough for me to feed the cable and I'm routing it behind the airbag. Eventually the cable is gonna pop out the other side, again, underneath the airbag, and then I can begin to pull the cable all the way through. And this is a great view where you can see how I routed the cable underneath the airbag. Next, I'll do a similar process with the power cable. I'm gonna lift the trim and I'm gonna insert it underneath the airbag and I'm gonna continue to feed that power cable until it gets to the top and then I can reach in there and fish it out and then begin to pull it through so I can have enough length to reach the mirror dash cam. Now that I have enough length, I can connect it to the mirror dash cam. Then I can begin to hide the cable by pulling any excess cable and then hiding it in the same way that I did with the rear camera cable, again using my fingers or the installation tool to fully hide and conceal this cable underneath the headliner. Notice how both cables are now underneath the airbag. Now I can continue to feed the power cable down the A-pillar, again underneath the airbag area, towards the footwell of the vehicle. Now I can place the weather strip back into this area and the A-pillar. Now I could potentially install all of the weather strip back and continue inserting the cable for the rear camera, but I find it easier to leave the weather stripping off at this point since I already pulled it. Notice how I hide the cable with my fingers or using again that tool to push it into the headliner and then I push the weather stripping back into place. And then I'll just continue routing the rear camera cable towards the rear of the vehicle. And again, I'm just using my hands or the installation tool. This particular car, the trim is a little tight, so I am using the tool to lift the trim away from the headliner and then pushing the cable into the trim to hide it. Now I'm being a little careful here because this headliner is already separating from the roof, so I don't wanna damage that any further. Since this car has window tint, I'll mount the camera on the outside of the car. And yes, there is another airbag here, so I'm gonna gently lift this cover and tuck the cable as far away from the airbag as possible. Next, I'll remove this cover and feed the cable into here until I can catch it on the other side.
Now most vehicles have a hole or two in this area, which allows me to pass a cable through. Same as before, I'll feed the cable towards the hole until it makes it into the trunk where I can grab it and pull it through. And there it is. Now I can grab the connector and gently pull the cable into the trunk area. Now it's just a matter of tucking the remainder of the cable into here, allowing me to close this panel back up. Finally, this cover goes back on so this looks nice again. But you know what actually looks even nicer? A slim wallet like this one made by Exter. Features premium to scanny leather and quick access to all your cards. It also comes in other colors and styles like this one in Jupiter green leather. Also fans out your cards and has an integrated strap to hold your cash or perhaps some business cards. And if you need more storage, the Parliament Vachetta model has even more pockets while still staying slim. But it's not just about looks, Exter also has a tracker option so you won't misplace your wallet ever again. The tracker card connects to the app and it recharges from solar power. They also have other cool accessories like their slim key holder and mini key tracker. Get up to 25% off using my code AUTOPHONE during checkout. I'll place a link to the wallet in the description down below. In the rear of the vehicle you can see how that cable has made it through and I'm gonna route it towards the trunk area and I'm gonna use a hole that is behind this light to route the cable. Notice how I'm pushing into that light to separate it and once it unclips now there's enough space for me to fish a cable right through here. And normally I place the camera right in the middle of the rear license plate area. However, in this vehicle it's gonna stick out too far, so I'm gonna place it a little bit off center, that way the camera can be a little bit further in and not stick out like a sore thumb. I'm gonna clean the area first so it's gonna stick really well, and then I can take that camera, peel the sticky bag, and then secure it to the trunk. Now I can take the cable from the rear camera and I'm gonna insert it into that space that was made available by that housing being moved off from its original area and then I can grab it with my fingers and then pull it through. Notice that I don't wanna pull too tight, I wanna have it somewhat relaxed on here so it doesn't get damaged and then I can re-snap this cover back into place. Now there are some cases where the housing will not fit back into place because of the cable or we can damage the cable by forcing the housing back into place. So in those cases, I just got a very small opening into the housing that still allows the cable to go through, but still keeps the trunk sealed from the elements like water or exhaust gases because we wouldn't want those to get inside of the vehicle. Now I can route the camera cable towards the extension cable. Now I can connect the rear camera cable to the rear camera extension. Now it's a matter of securing that rear camera cable to the vehicle and I'm gonna secure it to an original harness that is already on the car, that way it blends in. Notice how I'm following that original harness and using zip ties or cable ties to secure the rear camera cable into place. Securing the cable is also important to make sure it doesn't get pinched when the trunk opens or closes. Then I can hide any excess cable into this area. Lastly, I gotta route the power cable towards the power socket of the car. And what is really important here is that I'm making sure that the cable will be fully secured away from any of the car pedals. I like to use plenty of zip ties in this area, just like I did in the trunk of the car, to secure the cable in place. And finally, this can be plugged in. This install is now finished. So hopefully this video gave you an idea of the typical installation process for a mirror dash cam. I also have videos on my channel on how I hardwire these dash cams, that way I can enable parking mode, which is parking surveillance. If you guys wanna check that video out, I'll put a link to it in the description down below. Remember, I also place a link below to the mirror dash cam, as well as other mirror dash cam reviews that I have for those as well. If you guys have any other questions regarding this, please put that in the comments down below. If you found any part of this video helpful, make sure you hit the like button to support the channel, and stay tuned, as I have a lot more installation videos and reviews coming up. 
Thank you guys for watching, and as always, I'll see you on the next one.